Hi there! If you're watching this video, it means you want to do full body tracking with Beat Saber with an avatar. Now this video is only going to cover the method using LIV and not the custom avatars mod for Beat Saber. To start off, let's go over the things you'll need to get started. You'll need a VR headset, but you can't use a Quest or an Oculus headset unless you already have modded Steam VR tracking into its system. We need to use Vive trackers to make this to work, and a Quest will not support Vive trackers natively. So you're going to need a Steam VR based headset. Today we'll use a Valve Index, but an HTC Vive or a Pimax or anything that tracks a Steam VR will work. You'll need your two controllers, three Steam VR Watchman dongles for your Vive trackers, and all the Vive trackers themselves. You'll need a way to attach them to your body. I recommend using the track strap pluses from Rebuff Reality. Um, they have a battery built in on them, allowing for longer play sessions. When plugging in your Vive trackers, make sure that they are plugged into a USB 3 port on your computer, and you put the little receivers where they can easily be communicated with the trackers, so like they're not sitting behind a monitor or a shelf, they're kind of up high. So I have them right here on a wall, and you can just plug them in like that. Next, you're going to want to make sure that you have a program called LIV installed. We don't have it installed here, so let's go ahead and walk through the installation and the setup. Make sure you have SteamVR installed too. Once the software is downloaded, we can go ahead and launch it. If it asks for a user account control prompt, hit yes. We'll need to agree to the end, license, or the end user license agreement, and we'll need to create an account. Once the account is created, we can go back to the LIV application. And once it's running, we're going to go ahead and start SteamVR. Make sure that your headset and your tracker dongles are plugged in. Okay, so before we jump into Beat Saber with everything, we're going to need to turn on our trackers and figure out where they go on the body. Unlike VR chat, LIV needs specific controller or specific tracker uh, assignments. So we're only going to do one at a time, so first turn on only one of them. Should appear in our space in a second here. Ah, there it is. Okay, once the tracker shows up, go ahead and open your SteamVR dashboard, go to Settings, Controllers, and then Manage Tracker. This one is lit up, and we need to figure out where we want to put it. Let's put this one on our right foot. So we're going to go ahead and click on Disabled, and this will open up a drop menu, and we're going to select Right Foot. Perfect. Now that that is done, we're going to go ahead and turn the tracker off, and then we're going to set it aside. Now we're going to turn on our second tracker. It'll take a second to connect. So here's our second tracker. We're going to go back to our Settings dashboard, go to Controllers, uh, yeah, controllers and then manage trackers. This one has a long belt on it, so this is going to be our waist. So we're going to set this to waist. And then once that's done, we're going to go ahead and turn the tracker off. Then we're going to grab our third tracker and turn it on. Then this one is going to be our left foot. So we're going to go down here to controllers, manage trackers, click on disabled, set to left foot, and done. Once all the tracker assignments have been made, turn all of them on and put them on your body. Okay, once all of our trackers are turned on and enabled, let's go ahead and launch Beat Saber. Okay. Now that our game is loaded and our songs are loaded, we're going to go ahead and open our SteamVR dashboard, go back to the desktop, and find the LIV window. If it's not already open, go back to Steam and launch it. We're going to go to Mixed Reality Capture and hit Start PC VR Mixed Reality Capture. LIV may need a SteamVR driver. If it does, go ahead and click Install, and then once it's done, it's just going to reboot SteamVR. So we're going to go ahead and reboot. Okay, now that SteamVR is restarted, let's go ahead and launch Beat Saber again. Oh, my controller just went to sleep. As with before, if you have any custom songs uh, with the song core loader, make sure that they load first. Always takes a minute. <laughs> okay, 
Now that our game has kind of figured itself out, everything's loaded, we're going to go back to our SteamVR dashboard, go to the desktop, and go to LIV. We're going to go back to Start PC VR Capture, and we're going to hit Let's Go. It'll automatically hook into Beat Saber and open the compositor, and this will allow us to have an avatar. We're going to go ahead and skip the tutorial here because we pretty much know how this works. Now here's Beat Saber. <laughs> Success. So, and that's our avatar and this is what it would look like. But as you can see, I'm moving my feet around, I'm moving my waist around, and the avatar isn't doing that. We need to actually enable the tracking. So to do that, you're gonna take your index or your right hand and you're gonna point it down at this little LIV and we'll open up our LIV menu. Let's go to avatar. And there's plenty here that you can pick from. I think this is a custom one that I have. Yes, and it still works. So what we're going to need to do first is enable waist and feet tracking. Now it's all kind of screwed up because our calibration is off. So we're going to need to calibrate our T-pose. So we're going to hit calibrate T-pose. Now you want to place your feet on the feet and then T-pose with your hands and stretch them as far out as you can and then click both triggers when you're done. This is still kind of screwed up. Let's delete this calibration and make a new calibration. Okay, calibrate T-pose. Success. So now we can move around and our avatar will move accordingly. You can change lighting mode to dynamic, but it always doesn't look the best, so I always leave it as static. Once that's done, you're ready to go. Let's go over camera settings, because where this is right now, you can't really see much. Um, so we're going to go back to our little button here and open up our menu. We're going to click camera 1, and this is our camera. So the inner circle allows you to move it around, and the outer circle adjusts like the zoom or the FOV. In here you can change uh, the vertical FOV manually and you can also change the velocity scale which is like kind of how smoothly it follows you. So that one that's like kind of smooth. Um, you can also have it as a static camera where it won't follow me if I walk around. This point right here is where it will look and you can move it around. And then you can, of course, move the camera around again, and you can change the FOV. But I like to leave it as a dynamic camera, because it follows you around. Third-person camera will stick a camera behind you, and it looks kind of like that. I think I can turn on a setting here. Yeah, there we go. So it'll look like this, following me around. First person is just a first person camera, and you can see the, the arms and the avatar with it. So, plug in. Um, it seems to be circling me. I don't know, I've never really messed with the plug in camera before, so I don't know what it does. Mixed Reality um, uses the Vive uh, VIVR camera calibration, and it is somewhere up there. <laughs> Uh, gamepad allows you to use a Xbox controller to move the camera around. And selfie is like that. That's where it was before. You can also add a second camera. And it will go somewhere. Defaults down here for some reason. I don't know if that's being able to be seen, but that's kind of how LIV works and all of its camera shenanigans. You can also, what's, what's a really useful feature too, is that you can turn on the viewfinder. And the viewfinder is what I'm looking at. Or no, that's what the camera preview is. If we turn on the viewfinder. Where are where did it go? Oh no, that was the viewfinder. There we go. And with the viewfinder, we can also place it on our HUD. We can place it on our wrist. Or we can place it in the world, which will generate this other window. And you can stick it like right there. Or you can stick it up there, over here, or really anywhere. We'll set it back to the camera. 
The best advice I have on having an optimal camera placement is you really have to kind of experiment with it yourself. I always set the levels to Zen mode and then I'll pick a song that I want to play. So let's do let's do magic here. So we'll load up magic and I'll look at my viewfinder and see what's kind of in focus, what part of the environment kind of needs to be there. If I need to make changes, I'll just pause the level, grab the camera, we'll move it over here a little bit, and then we'll hit OK. We'll do a little more looking and see if it's all good. And then once I figured out what angle I want for the environment, I'll switch the level into no fail where I can see the blocks and how it flies at the avatar and see how it looks on that. A good thing when you're testing the blocks is switch your um, viewfinder placement to uh, world and so you can move it in front of you and see how it looks when you're playing the level.